Alright, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. Now, in today's video, we are actually going to be doing a little product unboxing and review of a new style of aquarium filter, which I really haven't seen before. So, as I'm sure all of us know by now, one of the most popular aquarium filters is the sponge filter. It's a big sponge. Um, you drop an airline hose down here, usually with an air stone on the end of it, and as the bubbles rise out of this tube, they break at the surface, and along with that air comes some water, and basically the idea is that uh, all that dirty water or aquarium water gets sucked through this sponge and then comes out the top. It's a very low flow aquarium filter, safe for all types of fish, and pretty easy to set up for the most part. But today we're going to be looking at the AQQA, or Aqua, I don't really know how to say the name, but the AQQA, we'll call it, uh, sponge filter. We actually have two of them right here in the small and the medium size. But if we look a little bit closer on the picture, we can see this one actually uses two sponges. I actually have a sponge filter already that's set up very similar to this, which we're going to be checking out very soon. But the key to this unit right here is this piece, and that's actually a motor. So this is basically a sponge filter that has a motor built in, so you don't have to worry about, you know, the air pumps, the airline hosing, stuff like that. So really today I want to compare and contrast a plug-in sponge filter to your typical air pump sponge filter. So we're going to go ahead and open this one first. I have the small and the medium size. This right here is the medium size. So popping this on open, the first thing we see here is some little ceramic rings. This already is something you don't get with a standard sponge filter. Now these really aren't 100% necessary, but it's a nice little addition. It really cannot hurt at all. If anything, it's beneficial. And then also in here we have the main unit itself and some instructions, but we don't need those. For the most part, this guy comes pre-assembled. I'm just going to slide in the little outflow valve right there. And then on the back, there's spots for us to, you know, stick these little suction cups on. One goes right there and one goes here at the bottom. And other than that, it's pretty much set up. If we take off one of these side chambers, like so, there's actually an extra sponge hidden right in here. It's going to take a little bit to expand, um, but you do get a nice extra set of sponges. There's one in each side, which is nice, but we'll go ahead and remove this. And now with our little empty container, we're going to dump in that ceramic media. So we'll do about half in this side and half in the other. Clamp this back on and then snap everything back together. So as I mentioned, this is the larger size. This is a five watt version and the small one we have right here is the three watt version. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting this one up, set up the smaller one and then we can compare them side by side. And here we have the two set up side by side with the larger one on the left and the smaller one on the right. Um, for the most part, the parts are very similar, except for the sponges are obviously bigger on the bigger one, smaller on the smaller one. If we zoom in and look at the pump, as you can see, the small one has a max of 70 gallons per hour, and the larger one has a max of 80 gallons per hour. So now that we got them all set up, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the tanks these are actually going on. So the first tank we're going to take a look at is not pretty by any means. It is a utility tank. This is a 20 gallon aquarium and it is my cherry shrimp breeding tank. So there's a whole bunch of red cherry shrimp. In fact, there's nothing in here other than red cherry shrimp. And these guys just eat and breed and go crazy in this tank all to themselves. So I can't have a super crazy power filter in here because it will suck up the baby shrimp. So I've opted for something low flow, a sponge filter. You'll see that soon. But it's really crazy to me how many cherry shrimp are actually in this tank. Like, the more you look, they're just everywhere. Um, so I have a single dual, well, that doesn't make sense. I have one sponge filter that's dual, has two sponges, similar to the ones we're checking out today. It's just powered by an air pump. As you can see, that's pretty much the only flow going on in this aquarium right now. It's pretty relaxed. It's pretty weak. But we're going to be upgrading that today to a new filter. Um, we'll get to that very shortly. But before we do that, I want to show you my second tank we're going to be upgrading the filter on today. And that is this one right here. Now this tank also isn't super pretty. It is a 10 gallon guppy tank. Now the only way I can describe this tank as it's a community tank. There's mulm in here, there's snails, there's tons of plants and these fish really just thrive in here. I know it looks bad on camera. Trust me, I know it looks bad. But these fish are super healthy, super happy, and they're just breeding like crazy. Once again, we have just a simple sponge filter in here. But because there is so many live plants and so much moss and so much algae, um, it really creates a natural environment. And as you can see, the fish are all healthy. We have no sick and dying fish in here. They are all just doing really, really well. But without further ado, let's start our filter upgrade. So this is the medium one right here, which is going to be going in the 20-gallon shrimp tank. Um, that's really as easy as just submerging it into the tank. You see I have some trouble here. I'm going to give you guys a quick tip real quick before you go ahead and submerge your filter into the aquarium or I guess at the same time it doesn't matter but by squeezing out those two big black sponges you'll be able to get all the air bubbles out of them which will then allow them to sink you know down onto the stand on the filter a little bit better another thing I found that I like is that the outflow nozzle spout right here is adjustable that's a cool little plus 
Um, other than that, just plug the filter in. It's plug and play. Stick it in the water, plug it in, off it goes. As you can see, compared to the normal sponge filter, there's a lot more flow going on, clearly. Um, one thing I also really like is how adjustable the flow is. So, for example, you see me turning it around here to hit the glass. That's because I didn't want to disrupt too much of those floating plants on the surface. So by being able to point the jet of water towards the glass, I'm still getting the powerful flow. I'm still getting the good filtration, but I can also minimize the current. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the air-powered sponge filter in here temporarily to seed the new filter with new bacteria. So I'm going to be running these side by side for a few weeks, and then ultimately I'll take out the air pump and disconnect that one. So far, what I've noticed is that it's extremely quiet compared to the gurgling from a standard standard air powered filter, this thing is almost silent, which is a huge plus for me. I cannot wait till I can unplug that noisy air pump and call it a day. The shrimp, as you can see here, are unbothered. They're still doing great. I basically did the exact same thing on the 10 gallon tank, set it in the water, plugged it in, and let it do its thing. Obviously, I'm still running it with the standard air powered sponge filter so we don't lose out on any of the current filtration, but I just suction cupped it back to this corner and we're just gonna let it run and do its thing. So far, it's already collected a ton of debris, which is awesome, and I'm hoping it does really good in here. Now, although I don't quite know what the longevity looks like on these filters, maintenance is super easy. The motor simply clicks right off the sponge base, and then you take this little piece off the bottom, snap it right off, and that leads to your impeller. In case you ever need to clean it, it's super easy to do so. So as you just saw, we got the filters all installed. What I went ahead and did is let them run for two days on the aquarium. And that brings us to current day right here. The filters have been running so far so good. The flow is still great. They've collected a lot of debris. Let's go ahead and flip back over to the aquariums, check them out real quick, and then I'll meet you right back here to wrap things up. So running back in on the 20 gallon shrimp tank, I did a water change on this tank and tried to clean it up a little bit, remove some of the plants. Uh, but the tank is looking really good. The water's super clear. The sponges aren't dirty at all because these shrimp honestly really aren't that dirty. The filter's doing awesome. I went ahead and changed the flow back out to the front once I filled up the water a little more and it's keeping the water super circulated. You'll see um, here in a second the little floating log is moving around. As you can see it spins perfect. It's really a perfect low flow filter and I don't have to worry about shrimp getting sucked in which is awesome because that would just be traumatic if all of my shrimp got sucked into the filter. But because the intake is so muffled there's really no strong suction it's nothing to worry about. As you can see when it's compared to the standard air powered filter it is a little bit bigger but it definitely has more filtration capability. And then swinging back into the 10 gallon, as you can see, the flow is not restricted at all, but these sponges are super dirty. This guppy tank is a dirty tank. I mean, there's no real other way to put it. These fish are just super dirty because there's a whole bunch of natural mulm in there. It's not bad at all. It just maybe doesn't look as pretty. Like, I'll admit, that looks ugly. It obviously doesn't harm the fish. It's simply just biological matter. You can go ahead and vacuum it out. As you can see, I did in the back a little bit. I did a little bit of a water change. That's why the water's a little murky. But over the next few days, I'm just gonna let these filters run and periodically remove those sponges, rinse them out in tank water. And over time, this tank will be looking a lot better. That standard sponge filter really didn't do too much for actively removing waste or mulm from the water column. So I'm hoping now running two filters will get this tank cleaned up in no time. Just like that, we are right back here where we started. And I want to give you some of my little quick final thoughts about these aqua filters. Now, obviously one thing I love about sponge filters of any caliber is the safetyness factor. You notice both tanks we worked on today had either very small fish or very small shrimp. With a sponge filter, you don't have to worry about them being sucked into an intake, an impeller, anything like that, because it's just sponge. So that was a huge selling point for me on these filters. Also, the price is really not that bad. Considering when you buy a normal sponge filter, you also have to buy an air pump, airline hosing, a check valve, sometimes an air stone, in addition to the sponge filter. These were plug and play. It came with everything needed from ceramic media, obviously the pump, and of course, even extra sponges. So overall, I'm super satisfied with these aqua filters. I'm gonna let them run on my two tanks for the next, hopefully, however long they last. Um, that will be yet to be seen. But I think they're honestly a great value for what they are. I believe you could probably get away with a small one for a pretty large size tank. Um, the medium size is definitely, definitely a good size for heavy stock tanks like the shrimp tank. There's just a lot of creatures living in there. Um, so the medium size worked perfect for that tank. As you can see, we tested them with a heavy debris load and these filters were no issue. Maintenance on them is so easy. Just take the sponges off, rinse them out in water, put them right back in. And last but not least, if you guys want to check out these cool motorized sponge filters for yourself, I will have a link in the description to the Pet Nanny store, which by the way offers free shipping. That's like Hyger's official site. Hyger and Aqua are like pretty much the same company at this point. And this Pet Nanny site or Pet Nanny store 
um, is very similar to Amazon. It's their own store. They sell all their products on Amazon. However, if you purchase it from their website, which just like Amazon offers free shipping, of course, um, there's a discount code down in the description for 15% off any item on their website and that code pretty much lasts forever. So if you wanna go ahead and get your new powered sponge filter or even just a standard sponge filter for 15% off, do not forget to check out that link in the description. And I think part of the conclusion we came to today in this video is whether you get a motorized sponge filter or an air powered sponge filter, both of them are capable of doing the job as long as you keep up with those maintenance and keep those sponges clean. But that is gonna be it for this video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and good.